Hey everyone, Andre here. And in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through version 1.2 of 3D Modern Menu on the Asset Store. I just released a semi-large update and it comes with a few new cool features that I want to run through so you know what is there and how you guys can use it in your project. So let's just jump right in. And I'll start just by showing you the current demo scene of the new version of the main menu that comes with version 1.2, which is under the scene titled Menu Scene New. Now you can find this by opening up your Slim UI folder in the project view, going down to Modern Menu. Let's go down to Scenes, and there you go. We got Menu Scene New, we have the mobile version and the original one, which comes with the all the, all the previous versions of Modern Menu, of 3D Modern Menu. We have the README and the standard second scene as it's been there from the beginning. But the new fun update is this menu scene, new. And what is so new about it? Well, let me show you. If we run through the demo scene really quick, I can run you through exactly what has changed. Now at first glance, you probably notice that it's a little bit sleeker. So now we're using the Rubik font and you have play, settings, and exit, which have been there, but now we have extras. Now extras is a new button that is showcasing the new vertical layout groups that are assigned here. So I can keep adding buttons to this list and it'll keep extending vertically. So we can have as many buttons as we want here. And you can do that in just a few seconds. And I'll run through showing that, but for this example, I just wanna show you all that's new in this pack. If you press the exit button, you still get the, the normal exit menu. If you press play, some updated animations, and then all the the hover states and, and click uh, animations have all been modified. Setting screen, I'll get to in a second. So the extras panel right now is just uh, showing some of the other packages that you can get from Slim UI. So I wanted to keep them all logged here. Just a nice little library that you can use as a reference to see what else we actually have available. Now let's go to the settings and run through those. So settings page is still pretty similar, but again, all the fonts have been updated, all the animations have been updated, and I'll show you guys the surprise in a just, just a bit. So you can go to key bindings, everything is still updated, all new buttons, all new colors, everything is a little bit sharper, crisper. I turned down the post-processing so the bloom isn't as much. It just feels a lot more modern and up-to-date than it used to. Now let's go back and I'm gonna hit stop and I'm gonna show you the biggest feature that is included with version 1.2. So if we go over here to the data folder, we have the new theme editor. I am so excited about this because it is really simple, but you guys can customize your colors in literally seconds. So these are the color presets that I have now. I have the blue shades, the orange shades, and then the green shades. Now, if I go to the camera and then I go down to the inspector settings for the script you see the new options here for theme the theme controller the reference file is the uh, theme editor uh, asset file up here and you can choose what custom preset you want to use now let me select custom 2 and show you here what happens if I press play just like that we're now using the blue color preset. I am super excited about this because now you guys can change the colors and do whatever you want. And this is the other exciting part is that I can change this at runtime and it will update as we're moving forward. So if I don't like blue, I want to change it to any other color. Now we can just use the color wheel and change it to anything that we want. So I actually like this pink color. So also any text that you want to change colors with as well, you can do that too. So all the, all the text that's actually assigned with the specific editor script attached is what changes. So I didn't add it to settings or any of these. That's why it's not updating, but I'll show you how you can add them to whatever text you want uh, if you want to have the colors changing. But let me change it back to the way it was so we're not looking like a watermelon here. All right, let's change it back to blue. And uh, let me show you how to actually assign the theme script. 
So right down here, if we scroll down to the actual button, you can see this flexible UI element. This is all you have to add to your button image components or text components. And then you just have to check whether or not it's an image or if it's a text. And if it's an image or a text, then the color will respond accordingly. So if you open this up and you go to the actual text file, you realize down here, there you go, I added flexible UI element, and then I, I checked that it is a text uh, as opposed to an image. And that's how it's getting the color values from the theme editor. Now, if you want to modify the prefab uh, in your own scene and, and change the menu buttons and layout, all you have to do is right click, unpack the prefab, and there you go. Now you can modify it. And I said earlier that you can add buttons as you want to, and this is how you do it. So select one of the buttons in the vertical layouts, any of them throughout the project, and then you can just duplicate it. And just like that, duplicating it, I'll say that this is new button. There you go. New one. Multiply it again, or duplicate it again. And you can keep going. See, I even hit the limit now of the size of the menu, but you can actually change that just by increasing the height here at the top. Super simple. You can see that I can add as many buttons as I want, and I can just keep extending the length of the menu. And if I want to add new menus, all I have to do is, when you click the menu, is go on to the on click, and then make whatever sub menu you want to appear just game object set active to true, which is how I do the extras button now. So you see, I just go, um, actually this one I actually call it in the script, but if you don't want to do it in the code and you just want to have it uh, in the on click event, you don't even have to have objects enabling and disabling in code. You can do it straight from here. For example, I can put the extras menu here and then I can do game object, set active, and then true. And then that would also enable the menu when I press it. Um, it complicates things when you want to close menus, because if you're trying to close a menu, you have to make sure that um, all of them are closing so that if you go to the settings screen, you're not still having menus left open instead of actually hiding them um, so that when you switch menus and you go back, it's not still open. It's just one of those little user experience uh, details that you should keep in mind, which is why I handle this through code. But I'm probably going to do in a future update a, uh, a small update where you can have infinite menus and they all close at once uh, whenever you're changing the menu as opposed to having to do it just from you know, manually the way I do it through code now. But that is something that will come later down the road. You guys don't have to worry about that. But that's all you really need to do to get started. So thanks so much for watching. 3D Modern Menu is available on the Asset Store for free. So if you want to use it in your projects, you can do that right now. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about the package and how to use it in your game or project. So go make something cool and I'll see you guys later. Bye.